Imagine you're starting a new business, but you're not sure where to begin. You have lots of ideas and projects, but you don't know which ones to prioritize. You're afraid of making costly mistakes that could lead to failure. What should you do? One solution is to learn from the mistakes of others. The Four Steps to the Epiphany book by Steve Blank provides valuable insights into the key factors that determine startup success. By studying the examples of companies that failed, you can avoid the pitfalls that led to their downfall. But even armed with this knowledge, it can still be overwhelming to navigate the many tasks and projects involved in launching a new business. That's where the compass comes in. In this video, you'll learn the three key steps to help you prioritize and focus your efforts. First, you'll discover who your ideal first customers are. By understanding your target market and their needs, you can tailor your product or service to meet their specific demands. Second, you'll learn to identify what kind of market you're operating in. Is it an existing market, where you'll need to compete with established players? Or is it a new market, where you have the opportunity to create something truly innovative? Finally, you'll understand why it's so important to launch your product as early as possible. Instead of trying to perfect your product before launching, you'll learn to embrace the concept of the Minimum Viable Product MVP which allows you to get your product to market quickly and start gathering valuable feedback from customers. By following these three steps, you can avoid the costly mistakes that many startups make and increase your chances of achieving long-term success. Chapter 1. Startups differ from larger companies in that they must find their customers and demonstrate that their idea is viable. Many business people believe that startups can follow the same methods as larger businesses, but this is a misconception. Unlike established companies, startups can't simply create a new product and introduce it to a pre-existing customer base. They must first understand their potential customers and their needs before developing a suitable product. This is known as a customer development process. Webvan, a startup that introduced the first online grocery business in 1996, failed because it focused on the product development process instead of understanding its customers and their needs. Founders of startups must also prove that their vision is viable, as they don't have the market knowledge and profitability of established companies. They must journey into the unknown and overcome obstacles and difficulties to achieve success. Entrepreneurs are like classical heroes who embark on a quest, learning as they go and discovering their best potential customers and business practices. To succeed, startups must follow a customer development approach and adapt to the market and customer feedback. Chapter 2. In order to stay on the right path, every startup should have a clear mission statement and a set of core values. When starting a business, it is common to not know exactly which direction the company will take. However, it is important to make certain decisions from the outset to keep the company on track. One of the first decisions a startup should make is to define a set of fundamental and long-lasting core values. These values will guide the company's decisions and actions throughout its journey. For example, a pharmaceutical company may decide that its core value is to make drugs that help people first and foremost. This value will guide the company when it comes to making decisions about profits versus helping people. It is important that the core values a company chooses are authentic and that the company stands behind them. In addition to core values, every startup should also have a written mission statement. A mission statement will help the company achieve its aims and objectives. It is especially important during a startup's early stages, when the company is going through a period of turmoil. The mission statement should answer questions such as, why do our company's staff come to work? What are our goals for growth and profit? How do we know when we're doing good work? Unlike core values, the mission statement may change over time as the company evolves. By defining authentic core values and a clear mission statement, a startup has a better chance of staying on the path to success. Chapter 3. When starting a new business, it is important to choose a strategy that fits the market type. There are different strategies for different startups, and the right one depends on the environment in which the business is operating. There are two main types of markets, existing markets and new markets. An existing market is where customers and competitors are already well established, making it easier to identify potential customers. However, 
it can be difficult to enter an existing market because established competitors may be difficult to outperform. On the other hand, a new market is one that a startup creates by finding new users. While this approach can be challenging, there are no established competitors yet. A third option for startups is to resegment an existing market by offering a cheaper version of a product or a niche product that meets the needs of a specific group of customers. This can help to attract customers who could not previously afford the product or who did not find a suitable product. It is important for startups to carefully consider the market type they are entering and to choose a strategy that is well suited to that market. By doing so, they can increase their chances of success in a competitive business environment. Chapter 4. When starting a new business, it is important to learn from mistakes and respond quickly to changing market conditions. Although mistakes are inevitable, catching them early can help minimize their impact. Startups can reduce the risk of making costly errors by gathering feedback from users as early as possible, even before launching a product. The primary goal of collecting feedback is to determine if there is a market for the product and if people are willing to buy it. If there is no market, the product can be adjusted to better suit customer needs. The process of gathering feedback and optimizing the product should be continuous. To illustrate this, consider the example of a startup selling a sheet of plastic to protect cell phone screens. The company should gather information on how frequently people experience broken screens, how much they spend on repairs, and what their ideal solution would be. In addition to learning from mistakes and gathering feedback, startups must be agile and responsive to changing market conditions. Traditional hierarchies and decision-making structures that impede agility are not viable in a fast-paced business environment. Every team member should have the authority to make urgent decisions to keep up with competitors. While these strategies can increase the likelihood of startup success, failure is still a possibility. The final key to startup success is perseverance and resilience in the face of setbacks. Successful entrepreneurs view failure as an opportunity to learn and improve, and they keep pushing forward even when things get tough. Chapter 5. To achieve success, startups should not rely solely on product development. This process, which is commonly used by larger companies, may not work for startups. Instead, startups should use the customer development process to create products that meet the needs of their customers. Startups that focus only on product development assume that they can create a great product and customers will automatically come to them. This is rarely the case. Product development is an internal process that needs to be synchronized with the external influences of the customer development process. The customer development process involves building a customer base and creating products that satisfy their needs. The way a startup carries out this process depends on its core values and mission statement, as well as the market type and customer feedback. For example, Design Within Reach, a designer product retailer, adjusted each catalog it published according to customer feedback from the previous catalog. This resulted in an increase in the number of customers and larger orders. By focusing on the customer development process, startups can avoid the mistake of creating products that customers are not yet ready for and instead create products that satisfy customer needs, leading to success. Chapter 6. When starting a new business, it is important to find early adopters who are willing to pay for a product, even if it isn't perfect yet. These early adopters are people who have a pressing problem that your product can solve. For example, if you are creating software to help banks cash checks, an ideal first customer would be a bank that is losing a lot of money by doing check cashing manually. By selling your software to these early adopters, you can get valuable feedback and improve your product for the mainstream market. Unfortunately, Many startups focus on building a perfect product for the mainstream market without looking for early adopters. This can lead to a lack of funds to make changes based on customer feedback or offering an outdated product. An example of this is Fast Office, which spent a lot of time and money engineering a home office device with email, fax, and phone functionalities. However, the product didn't sell well, and there wasn't enough money left to tailor it to customer needs. To avoid this mistake, it's important to get the product to market as soon as possible and collect feedback from real customers. Use this feedback to improve the product and make it suitable for the mainstream market. So, 
Focus on finding early adopters and refining your product based on their feedback before launching it to the broader market. Chapter 7. When a startup grows, it needs to come up with a plan to reach mainstream customers. To do this, the startup must first build a customer base by targeting different customers over time. In the customer creation phase, the startup has to decide whether to continue targeting customers similar to the early adopters, to enter a specific niche market, or to approach a broader range of customers. The decision depends on the type of market and the startup's understanding of its customers. Once the startup has refined its product according to customer feedback and found a target market, it can enter the company building phase. However, it cannot target mainstream customers until it understands how and why these customers would buy the product. To reach mainstream customers, the startup must adapt its strategy. It can use early adopters as cheerleaders to promote the product through word of mouth or by reviewing it in public. It can also use positioning to define and describe the product so that target customers recognize its characteristics and what appeals to them. In summary, startups must understand their customers, refine their product, and adapt their strategy to reach mainstream customers. Chapter 8. Startups need to carefully choose what messages they want to convey to their target customers and the right media to do so. In today's world, consumers are bombarded with advertisements and messages, making it crucial for startups to send the right messages that strongly influence the consumer's perception of the company. Messaging encompasses everything from product names to advertisements. For instance, a startup must be mindful of the names of their products, as it can affect how consumers perceive it. A product named Malathion, a pest control chemical, caused outrage in Santa Clara County in California in 1981, despite its effectiveness, due to its name's negative connotations. In addition to crafting the right message, startups must know how to communicate it effectively. Utilizing unpaid messengers, such as early adopters, industry experts, and thought leaders can be effective. However, Paid media such as advertisements in magazines, billboards, and websites should also be included in the marketing communication strategy. To determine the appropriate media to reach prospective customers, startups can ask early adopters what sources they use to gather information before making purchases. They can also conduct market research to find out which media potential customers, experts, and opinion leaders use the most. By doing so, Startups can target the media sources that get the most attention from their customers. For instance, if a startup's target customers predominantly read prestigious newspapers like the Wall Street Journal, they should not rely on advertising in obscure trade magazines just because it is cheaper. Startups must carefully choose what messages to convey and how to communicate them to reach their target customers effectively. Summary the main message of this book is that startups are different from big companies and need to figure out their market and strategy to succeed. They should listen to their customers and have a flexible strategy. The actionable advice is to define the core values and mission statement of the company, which will guide the startup through uncertain situations. Core values should reflect morals and differentiate the company from others, while the mission statement should clarify goals and why employees come to work. Now. Thank you for taking the time to watch, and if you found value in this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more great content, trust me, you won't regret it.